Dr. Nagaswamy is a world-renowned expert in the field of art, including archaeology, museums, temple culture, history, epigraph epigraphy, numismatics, music, dance, public affairs, ancient law and society, literature and education, and has earned international distinction in art and culture. He has appeared as an expert witness in many high-profile cases, most spectacularly in the following two cases. He was an expert witness in the London High Court on behalf of the Government of India, and it was his testimony which helped bring back the Nataraja back to Tamil Nadu. He was also an expert witness in the Allahabad Court, Lucknow branch, in the Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid demolition case, deposing for a full 26 days before the court to confirm the existence of a temple beneath the mosque based on the excavation undertaken by the Archaeological Survey of India. An archaeologist by profession, he retired as Director of Archaeology, Government of Tamil Nadu. He has also established an Institute of Epigraphy to train students in epigraphy and archaeology. He has been bestowed with many awards, fellowships and titles, notable among them the title of Kalai Mamani, bestowed upon him by the Government of Tamil Nadu, under the Chief Ministership of late Selvi J. Jailalita. Dr. Nagaswamy has completed his Master's in Sanskrit from Madras University and has a PhD from Deccan College, Pune. He has published 54 books and produced 13 dance dramas, apart from, apart from conducting excavations in 10 historic cities as part of his archaeological work. Dr. Nagaswamy has been appointed as honorary faculty member of Arsha Vidya Gurukulam by Pooja Sri Dayanand Saraswati Swamigal and awarded the title Vidya Seva Ratna by Sri Kanchi Kamakoti Pitadipati Sri Jayanand Saraswati Swamigal. I invite Dr. Nagaswamy to come on stage. Friends, this is only an observation before I go on to present my paper about a, a good paper presented by uh, Mr. Jairaman on the uh, Sanskrit uh, position and Sanskrit commission and so on. Friends, there is a Sanskrit ancient saying, Sahitya Sangeeta Kala Vihinaha. Sahitya Sangeeta Kala Vihinaha Sakshat Pasuhu. Pucha Vishana Hina. A person who doesn't know Sahitya, Sangeeta, and Kala he is only an animal without the tail. This is how the old one uh, describes. Now, I am very glad that he presented many statistics about uh, the position of Sanskrit and uh, the Commission's report. But we should also realize that Sanskritists themselves are also to be blamed for certain lacuna in uh, carrying the message of Sanskrit to the public. Number one, most important, they think of Sanskrit only as literature. But don't forget that we have thousands and thousands of inscriptions, written documents, records on stone and also on metal which are based on dharma shastras the same phrases used in dharma shastra in sanskrit literature like uh, manu yagnyavalkya parasara and so on these are not taken to the people music is a very important uh, aspect. Music contains maximum number of Sanskrit compositions and without Sanskrit, Indian classical music doesn't exist. But we have not strengthened carrying the message of Sanskrit, teaching Sanskrit to children who study music in uh, traditional schools. Similarly, Natya, Natya dance, all over India, we have excellent dance forms in North India and Southern India, in Eastern India and Western India, everywhere. And they all require Sanskrit. Bharata's Nati Sastra is one of the most outstanding literature that reaches the common man as Sanskrit. But we have not 
I don't see any report in the commission's report about strengthening study of Natya Shastra. It must be made compulsory at least in all the schools and colleges because it speaks about the theory of literature, theory of rasa, theory of Natya, and excellent communicative technique by um, <coughs> angaharas, bodily movements and bodily suggestions. This we have not done. And then excellent Ayurvedic texts are available. There are simple introductory Ayurvedic texts must be prepared and brought to the notice of the school children. What an amount of uh, enormous scientific uh, examinations have been done in our Ayurvedic literature, the whole body and all. It's all absolute science. But we should bring out small textbook and make it useful to the school children. So we have now got idea of Sanskrit as only as literature and perhaps about uh, Upanishads and so on. But this has to be brought down to the common people. In the village level, we do see great appreciation that they have sent, but this we have not exploited. So they should include the commission and whenever we speak of Sanskrit, we don't confine ourselves only to literature. Let us go to music, let us go to dance, let us go to scientific works like Ayurveda and other astronomy. There are a lot of people in the village level who could calculate in ancient times. Um, <laughs> lunar eclipse or solar eclipse well in advance, five years or six years in advance, when, at what time it will take place and when it will get renewed. All these things are all preserved in our astronomical uh, works. Panjanga, we call it. And there are many people who are very active in the village level, but we have never done anything to strengthen the traditional, uh, what you call uh, Panjanga study, uh, astronomical, it's not astrology, telling all types of uh, uh, you know, rubbish. But we want uh, calculation, absolute calculation. And astronomy is always mentioned as Ganita, Jyotisha. So I think the Sanskritists must get together and first see that apart from literature, of course we have wonderful literature, uh, but there are other areas where the common people can understand it. The temple worship, there are 85,000 temples in Tamil Nadu alone and out of which at least 80,000 people use Sanskrit even today for puja, kumbhabhishega, archana and so on. We have not strengthened that aspect of it. So I, I, I suggest in your report, you kindly add that we go beyond literature to all this. Then we can say Sanskrit is never dead. It is there, it is in the form of music, it is in the form of dance, it is in the form of living. Our personal conduct by the Griksha Sutras, Dharma Sutras and so on. So I suggest that you please add this one, though uh, it is not little away from my subject, it comes down to the main subject of Rasa also. Um, <coughs> there's not much to say about Rasa uh, Reader by Mr. Pollack, uh, Sheldon Pollack, because my study and understanding of his text, he has not understood what is Rasa. Rasa, uh, many people have mentioned it here, is not, a, you know, we have Sringara, Hasya, Karuna, Raudra, Veera, Bhayanakaha, Bhivatsa Adbuta. These are the eight rasas which are mentioned in uh, our text. And then Santa is also added as one of the one, ninth rasa. So much of our time is wasted whether there were eight rasas or nine rasas. Uh, <coughs> rasa is only one, the ultimate taste. And with reference to uh, what you are, literature, music, and dance, it means enjoyment of the aesthetic appeal arising from so many factors. Uh, vibhava, anubhava, sattvika bhava, and vyabhichari bhavas. 
Now, Bharata is one of the most outstanding scholars who has created uh, that work, Natyasastra, in which he has given, of course, uh, one vibhavai uh, ranubhavai scha sattikaihi vebhichari bihi. This and then aniyamana swadhuttam. This is called uh, as a nishpat. And then there is another one, Vibhava Anubhava Vyabhichari Samyogat Rasanishpati. So here the Sattvika is deleted. Then you have only Vibhava Anubhava and uh, Vyabhichari Bhavas. Now in the first part, uh, Bharata says only eight Rasas not nine dresses. Vibhava, Anubhava, Vyabhichari, Sattvika, Vyabhichari, Bhava, Rasanishpati. So if you read very carefully, when he introduces the word Sattvika, it is a technical term in dance parlance. And so he says, Ashtav Natya Rasasmrta. Yes. In Natya, there are only eight rasas. Why? Because Natya is essentially based on Sattvika Bhava. What is Sattvika Bhava? Is which is suggested by bodily gestures. It is a bodily communication technique of Angaharas and Karanas. What is Karana? Is um, Hastapada samayogaha nrittasya karanam bhavet. This is the basic unit of dance. Hastapada samayogaha, bringing it together. The uh, hasta and pada. Again here, hasta and pada are used as technical terms. Hasta representing the whole body above the waist, including a, a head. And pada includes the whole part of the body beneath the waist. So bringing these two together in a most beautiful form and aesthetic form that is called Nritta Karana or Natya Karana. Hatha Pada Sama Yoga. Yoga bringing them together not simply yoga, but samayoga, beautifully it is brought, then it is called karana. There are 108 karanas described in Bharata's Natya Shastra in chapter 4. And he gives these uh, 100 and movements, basic movements, and then the question arises, are there only 108? And then Abhinav Gupta, the commentator, he would say, no. Natyanam Anantyati, endless forms of uh, movement can be created. But for the sake of easy understanding, they have classified it into 108 forms. So they, they are called Nritta Karanas. And with these Nritta Karanas, you can combine two Nritta Karanas, three Nritta Karanas, or four Nritta Karanas, and these are called Angaharas. And so, Communicating with the help of so many Angaharas brought together and translating the music and its meaning through the bhava is the ultimate uh, communication technique by which the audience, the spectator, realize the aesthetic joy. Now, at the very first statement of Mr. Pollack, he says, that uh, I am the only scholar who has studied all the ancient texts and I give you the text as a, a, what you call rasa reader. And then, then he goes on to say that uh, some people do not know what is rasa, I have only realized rasa. And he says that rasa is not in the spectator, but rasa is in, in the actor. This is his argument. Absolutely, it is very clear that he has not understood what is rasa. Now take, for example, an actor, he communicates. 
when he communicates, he communicates the rasa which he has uh, experienced it elsewhere, and that with sole intention of communicating this uh, joy to the spectator, he brings in all the angaharas. Combines it with the music and also combines it with uh, uh, instrumental music, and then all these are made to suggest. And so his whole concentration is in communicating the one. Actor should only act on the stage. He should not think that uh, enjoy keep aesthetic joy. If he starts enjoying aesthetic joy on the stage. then his concentration will be only on this and not in communication so the sanskritist always emphasized pradhana what is most important in expression so they they don't say expression uh, expression is a uh, one form of plain form of abhidhavritti this is just plain communication technique but the best form of communication technique was brought in by arandavardhana who says vyangya vyangya is the suggestive mode you bring all these elements vibhava anubhava vibhichari bhava and satvika bhava and just suggest so that the ad uh, the spectator the audience realizes that joy aesthetic joy and that is rasa so as we are having basic bhavas shringara ache karna and on all that the rasas are also named after this same bhava rasas are not different only one ultimately that's why they said raso vai saha we have the ancient saying in veda what is rasa is a extraordinary aesthetic joy a man enjoys through and that is equal to ananda what is ananda is brahma so we have a few one of the most interesting uh, um, literature about rasa is an uh, upanishad uh, maybe i'll go quick, quickly and when when i am when i have finished my timing you completely tell me so that i shall stop it at that place okay right now i see Uh, this is raso vai saha it's a 4000 year old vedic statement what is rasa who is this uh, saha raso vai saha who is this saha rasa is the juice or essence of indian ethos saha is the eternal brahman identical with supreme joy where is it available it is in your own self as spectator where is it is, it is you enjoy the delight that is the ananda which is identical with brahman next slide please now the first sage this is a very important point that is uh, we get it from an upanishad who wanted to describe the use of the first articulated sound after meditation was prajapati and when he discovered the basic recognizable sound basic sound a u m with this you can create the whole all whole literature whole speaking technique he the discoverer was called prajapati because he could compose words and so all the people started following him and so he became prajapati the wise men among who were benefited by the discovery started composing words and sentences with embellished expressions this is alankara em embellished uh, uh, this thing is alankara now it does not exist in a statement ordinary statement when you beautify it then it becomes poetry it is called kavya what is kavya is that which is kavaniyam creative and beautiful kavaniyam kavyam 
is beautifully explained as that which is based on rasa. Embellished with sounds and emotions and also metrical padas. Rasa asritam, guna alankara vritti sahitam, kavyam. This is the definition we have. Kavaniyam kavyam. And so its suggestion is the most important mode of expression. You have gunas, you have alankara. You have plain words and also uh, what is called bhakti, another mode of expression, where the primary meaning is suppressed and the suggestive meaning is thrown out. If the important uh, is given to the suppression, then it is not rasa. When importance is given to the suggestive uh, meaning that comes out of it, either the verbal communication or the meaning coming out of it, then it is called rasa. It is called vyangya, suggestion. Suggestion is based on also rasa. Next one, please. When the sages living in the midst of nature saw the dawn brightening the horizon, they addressed the Rig Vedic poems to the rising sun. And the Rig Vedic hymns appeared as beautiful lotus flowers. And these were called Kavyas. Next one. These are poetry hymns. The Rishis visualized the Rig Vedic hymns as the lotus flowers and the sun's rays falling on them as bees collecting the honey reflected in the sun's resmis. From where you get also the word rasa. They realized that the plants grew, the birds and animals became active, so they gave tejas, brightness, fame and food and tasted the juice which is rasa. Next one, please. The picture, this picture, beautiful picture is given in Chandokya Upanishad where not only the Rig Veda, but they also say in the south, they had the Ajur Veda, in the west, they had the Sama Veda, and then in the north, they had the Atharvana Veda, and on the top, they had the Itihasa Purana. From all these, which are all Kavyas, you know, they, they thought that they got the juice, the vital life juice, Rasa. Uh, and then that they call it Rasanam Rasaha. The Rasa of Rasa. The juice of juice. And this is given in Chandokya Upanishad. Next one. Now, when the sages composed these poems, they were meant for others, not for themselves. So it is something like communicating to the, uh, the person who hears it, who enjoys it. Next one. Now, in the case of Natya, all the eight rasas enumerated are communicated through various factors. That's Vibhava, Anubhava, Sattvika, and uh, Vibhichari Bhavas. The, the basic one are the Sattvikas, and the Sattvika Bhavas are Angaharas. Next one, please. Now, in the case of Santa, no bodily movement is possible and cannot be introduced in dance. If they, there is movement, there is no santa. They cannot give santa. So, Bharata very cleverly removed santa and he said only eight races. But later on, next one, le later on, uh, santa was also included as rasa, but it is not in the nat, it is not a natya rasa, it is a kavya rasa. So, there is a distinction between natya rasa and there is uh, another one, kavya rasa. Next one, please. See, Bharata said, Vibhava Anubhavaihi Sattvikaihi Vibhichari Bihi Aniyamana Swadutvam Ashtav Nakya Rasasmata. Next. Another place he says, Vibhava Anubhava Vibhichari Samyogat Rasanishpatihi. So here it is for Kavya. Next one. A different reading is noticed in 
two manuscripts in the critical edition of Gaikwad Oriental series on Bharatasanati Shastra, page 102. So a doubt may arise whether originally Bharata accepted nine dresses or eight dresses. But this need to be checked up whether this is corroborated by bhavas. Rasas arise from bhava. So they always give rasa and then from which bhava this rasa arise. So if Santa is one of the rasas, they should have a, exactly a counterpart of bhava, but that is not there. So originally there is only eight, also in the critical edition. So we are sure, absolutely sure, according to Bharata, this Nattirasa consisted only of eight. Next one, please. Evidently, those who inserted the ninth rasa did not think of this lakna. The rasa they give nine, but the bhava they give only eight. So uh, there could be no doubt Bharata consistently used eight rasa, and that is called Nattirasa. Next one, please. Now, uh, in the case of actors in the Natya, the main purpose uh, was to communicate. I want to bring to your notice one, one, one very important uh, occurrence. In the 18th, 19th century, there were a lot of dramas that were performed in the uh, village streets. And uh, Prakhlada Bhakti Vijaya was one of the most important um, drama that attracted them, where Narasimha manifests and then he destroys the Hiranyakas with the demon. But, you know, it is the climax, and the drum and sound will be very high, the music will be very high, and when uh, one man he put as, acting as Narasimha put this uh, Hiranyaksha on his lap and actually tore his body, virtually killed him, because the actor thought he is Narasimha. He killed him. So, so much so, the British passed an order that Prakhlada Bhakti Vijaya should not be enacted in the stage. That, that shows very clearly that the actor has only to act. Don't do it reality. So there is no question of reality show in dance. If they say reality show, they do not know what is dance. So, but our friend, Pollack says it is not in the spectator, but it is in the actor. If the actor start acting, this is what will happen. Similarly, similarly, if the Sringara Bhava, uh, the hero and heroine, should only act as uh, doing Sringara. If they start doing Sringara, there are two Sringara, Samboga Sringara and Vipralamba Sringara. All the audience will throw stones at these fellows who are dying. So it can never be in uh, actor, it can never be in Nata, it is in the spectator. Sahridaya. Yesham Kavyanusi Ilanavasati. Visadi bhute manu mukure, varnani tanmai bhavana yogyata, teyeva sahirdeya sambhada bhaja sahirdeya, says Abhinava Gupta. Those who have cultivated, educated, who know what is music, what is the sensitivity of various forms of bhavas and anubhavas, reading kavya, seeing so many natyas, their mind is like a tender flower, and that can only experience the aesthetic joy. Otherwise, if the spectator is not ready to listen, his mind is not here, whatever he does will not give him that aesthetic joy. So, in order to understand rasa, we have to understand the kavya, and uh, we have to understand the angharas, and we have to understand what is music, the modulation of music, updata, anudata, swarita, etc. And also the term instrumental music. So it is an integrated art. If it is in Natya, the spectator must be able to appreciate all this together. Both Sangeeta, Sangeeta is vocal music and instrumental music. And uh, uh, kavya, the meaning of the suggestive kavyas. Next one, please. 
so the actor on the stage should only act as if he is communicating there is a word which they use the sanskrit is used pradhana what is the main intention of the actor the main intention of the actor is to communicate to the audience it is the audience who experience and that experience of aesthetic joy is called rasa i think as he does not understand the difference between audience and the actor and he says only actor uh, experiences uh, rasa and not the audience it is my considered view that uh, polak knows nothing about na- uh, rasa and his whole rasa theory book can be thrown into the dustbin and uh, i think we should understand that rasa is only divided into two but actually only one the great ananda the great joy we experience is rasa it is natya rasa when it is derived from dance it is kavya rasa when it is listened kavya is always meant to be recited in ancient india and so recitation through recitation we hear even there the hearer acts as the spectator there and so in most cases even in kavya the rasa is in the listener and the poet concentrates on how to communicate the rasa to the audience to the person who wants to read the kavya great kavya and the greatest kavya is the most ancient kavya is valmiki ramayana adi kavya so i think if we can distinguish this and understand rasa means aesthetic joy that is experience in human mind and that is in the spectator yes the actor gets this experience elsewhere and that full experience he is trying to communicate and still he is only communicating and not experiencing the dawn so i think as polak knows nothing about ra- rasa there is no need to explain further what is rasa and what is his rasa theory and all and what is interesting is that he speaks bharata as not a shastra rasa and then centuries of development so many people have written so many things not every text is great but by just citing one author oh this author has said this this author has said this is not establishing that rasa is in the actor and not i think that will be enough for my explanation thank you very much friend thank you very much the main flaw in pollock that you have pointed out that he sees it in the actor the rasa and not in the audience i would i agree with it it is a very profound insight you have i think the first person i know who made that is you that observation because this undermines the whole rasa theory that he derives i want to offer my an analysis of why he says this why he says it i want to offer my analysis in the judeo christian tradition that he comes from agency lies is very concentrated top down agency is top down it is authority that goes from the top to the dom so he is reflecting that that the actor is the one who has got this and the audience sort of passive whereas in our tradition it is decentralized the audience is merely the actor is merely enacting and suggesting but the audience is ex- themselves getting the rasa for themselves an analogy i want to offer is that the marriage act the act the marriage ceremony in christianity the couple don't marry themselves the priest pronounces them man and wife whereas in the hindu ceremony they marry they they are doing the marriage act and the priest is a coach who is sort of suggesting what they should do so i draw that analogy that uh, in many ways uh, like the rituals also 
you do not really need the you could do a lot to yourself also the agamas especially you could perform on your own whereas in the west in the christian tradition judeo christian tradition you need it is top down authority because the whole metaphysics is very top down the whole uh, exp- the whole uh, experience the whole uh, uh, you know his- the history centrism built into the Ab- abrahamic religions makes it very top down god to prophet to this that church and what not so would you like to comment on this uh, interpretation i have yes uh, I, i i for want of time i didn't go into some more points uh, we have a very important grammar in tamil called tulkapiyam which is assigned to for second century ad and we have one chapter in tulkapiyam which uh, is called mai padu it is uh, almost a anga uh, hara like thing you know now what you experience aesthetic joy what you experience and there, there is a very interesting information that how this is god by the actor and how it is transmitted to the uh, spectator he says uh, first the object of joy the second the uh, instrument bodily instrument which uh, absorbs that and then the power that takes it into the mind of the spect- uh, of the actor and then the joy he experiences all this is one aspect so four stages and then the, the reverse is the stage by that uh, from the mind the actor sends the uh, command by the bodily action angahara he can brings it out and explicit is the third stage and the fourth stage is the anubhava by the spectator so it is uh, experiencing rasa the tamil uh, tradition says four receiving and four stages of giving it to the spectator that shows how as early as 2000 ad uh, 2000 years ago for second century ad tamils have absorbed this uh, um, bharata is not as hasta tradition and they have transmitted it to uh, the audience the second sir another point that we have tried to we have tried to apply this theory to painting art and i had had discussion with all great artists in both in india and abroad whether now in modern art they say the artist more important they say artist whatever he thinks they think so much of artist and they speak artist is the main person who enjoys it but the purpose of drawing or painting it if he wants to do it he can do it somewhere and uh, keep on looking at it he wants to give it to the public and he want the public to appreciate it only when he is uh, satisfied with the public appreciation is great then he feels very happy and so even in the case of painting and also in the case of sculpture the uh, aesthetic joy that is experienced is not in the artist that's what he is trying to say that but it is in the uh, public who appreciates it and his whole intention is only to communicate so uh, this is uh, receiving and giving back uh, that is uh, so most th- important that they say in the ancient times so dr nagaswami is it yes sir in bhakti there is no actor do i as the bhakt can i experience it entirely uh, on my own without a person transmitting it to me in bhakti for example or in uh, somebody you know singing on their own uh, their own singing their own uh, you know is is that or is it or do i always need some other person to act it and give it to me mm. uh, i i i feel that uh, we wanted to give a most beautiful aesthetic experience to the art artist this this man should have experienced it and the intensity with which he has experienced it he will be able to translate it you know but and my so, question is different my yes. question is that suppose there is no one else i am i am a bhakt 
yeah. I'm doing bhakti. Am I able to experience the same joy as if, uh, on my own? Suppose I'm all alone. There is no other person who has experienced who gives it to me. I don't would depend on anybody. I am experiencing on my own. It could be spontaneous, but while I'm dipping in the Ganga, it could be while I'm doing puja, it could be while I'm doing meditation. Isn't it something built into me as as my own self, the Satchita Nand that I can invoke on my own, or do I depend on someone else necessarily? In other words, is this external transmission from the actor uh, one method uh, only, uh, while I am also capable of doing it on without the actor? Or is it that that's the only, that I have to go for looking for an actor to give it to me? But if one experiences himself, is create something like a created joy, I, I, I don't think it will be a full, full joy, aesthetic joy that he is going to come in it. So, or he himself <laughs> feels as it a aesthetic joy. So you feel that, therefore this, you feel that, uh, there is no that the claims of the bhaktas who never had uh, somebody acting in, hey, uh, unless he experiences it. Yeah. So, so you are saying that uh, the claim of the bhakta that yes. he has of his own experience this is not valid. It is not possible. I think so. So, I, unless he has experienced it. No, no. I am saying from that outside. You so so okay. I I disagree with this. I mean, I disagree with this. I I don't believe that in our tradition. Uh, you need another authority, another person to transmit it to you because we have, then we would uh, negate the whole bhakti tradition and you would negate the whole tradition of, uh, uh, of uh, Raj Yoga and meditation where you do not need it to be transmitted to, from another person but you on your own are able to get it. You are no, saying that... that no, no, that, your, that, that doesn't fall under the category of aesthetic joy. Okay. Joy is there. It is not aesthetic joy. So how is uh, spiritual joy, anand from spiritual joy, bhakti, bhakti? Yeah, in the ultimate stage, both are same. So how, so therefore, you are, you are therefore it is possible to have this joy, yes. this anand, without an actor giving it to me. Yeah, the, the, I mean, if you are speaking about that ultimate experience. Uh, these are, when we say aesthetic joy, when we look at dance or music and then experience it, that's all within the worldly level. When you go into the ultimate one and beyond that there is nothing and that joy is one. But in the first slide you and talked the, about... The other one at the worldly level, yeah. there is difference. But in the very first slide you talked about Brahman. Yes. You talked about that is the, that is the rasa, ultimate rasa is that one. Yes. So ultimate, that is already said by all, all people. Yes. They have said it. There's so only that, one rasa. So that ultimate rasa of that one is something also available in other in traditions where there is no actor, but I am waiting it on my own. Yeah, yeah. It is a universal. Yes. It is universal. So I am able to not depend on an actor, That's but right. get it on my own. That's right. Yes. So can we say that, now that we agree on this, can we say that the recipient, the audience, uh, have that innate capability in them and the actor invokes and activates it but they have to have that innate capability in them whereas in the Abrahamic traditions they do not because they are original sinners they cannot have that they are not Satchita Nand they are original sinners and then therefore somebody else has to do something to them that's a big, big profound difference and I feel that uh, yeah. Pollock is coming from that side no, uh, but but I, I, I think I, I don't get the full uh, import of your question, but this is the thing that this aesthetic joy is ephemeral. Yes. It is not permanent. You move out, then you are in the world. Right. It, it doesn't continue. Again, you see another, another dance, you see another same aesthetic joy you are going to experience. But when you experience the final joy, uh, uh, through yoga or whatever the case may be, that and you remain in that whole uh, that is uh, the final rasa. But rasa, vaisa, that's why rasa nam rasa. But even the ephemeral joy I experience uh, listening to profound music, I on my own with headsets and iPad, you know, I mean, I uh, whatever this uh, yeah, device. It, uh, yeah, yeah, it is for the time being. Yeah, so it is it is temporary, just like uh, from the actor. Just like the actor gives it temporarily, ephemeral, I can also get it from a recording. No, author the feels actor. it. Author yeah. feels it. 
but when he composes it, when he writes it, he writes it for others, not for him. So if he is going to experience it, he can keep on doing it himself. Right, right. Yes. So from the author's point of view and the performance point of view, the goal is to transmit to others rather than for himself. Uh, right. Agreed. But the others also can, on their own, if they don't buy the ticket and play, watch the play or no trance, they can sit at home and also enjoy it on their own. That is only an anubhava. Yeah. That's, that's, one, and that's okay. why that's why I, I, I said uh, that uh, uh, Abhinav Gupta yeah. uh, says that it is only in the mind of those who have cultivated, who have understood the sensitivity of this uh, aesthetic joy by reading Kavya and seeing, they will be able to appreciate fully what is put on a stage in the stage. So I have a different question. Uh, instead of a human actor, if I have a recording, this actor is dead and he was performing and giving me the rasa in the audience. Now he's dead and we're watching it in a video. Can that video transmit it, the same? It is there. It is in a very elementary stage. It is there in the spectator already. But he has cultivated it and that he receives the full whole thing impact of that aesthetic joy. Yeah, no, no. But what I'm saying is different, not different point that can the same transmission happen Without a pranic creature, without a creature who's the actor being present, can it be transmitted through an electronic uh, playing of his video? But I don't think they apply this term to that. Uh, it's, it's only when they either listen to or see Vishya Kavya or Sravya Kavya. So it has to be live performance. Yes. So therefore, if I'm watching something on television or a recording, you feel it cannot give rasa. Um, well, now we have films, uh, yes. though it is not that it, it is possible to communicate. It. Yeah, so now now they are playing, uh, in all the temples, they are playing uh, recordings. All the temples, they are playing recordings. Yes. There is live also, but they are playing recordings. So are you saying that therefore the rasa is not possible because it is the live person is not there? Yes, we, we, all, we always feel that. In, a, in, a, in dramatic performance, they always want, they don't want recorded music, they don't like it, they don't appreciate it, they want the live music. Similarly, in, in picture also, uh, you, you, you see the actor live, then it has more greater ap uh, appreciation point than uh, without it. This is dull, this is after all movie, it doesn't give you that one. Thank you very much. I said that, yeah. To help me, you can do two things. You can go to the subscribe button on my YouTube and subscribe. We need more subscribers there. Uh, secondly, I get lots of emails on people saying, how do we donate? How can we help you? Uh, you go to rajivmalhotra.com or you go to infinityfoundation.com and you can hit the donate button. You can donate in dollars. There are different ways mentioned. If you want to donate in rupees, there is a column called uh, Infinity Foundation India and you click that and there are instructions on how you can donate in India.